Lucas here, Adventure Surplus, and today we're going to cover a handful of items that can make your life a little bit easier when you're out in the field for an extended amount of time. So these are all small items that can fit in your plate carrier, your chest rig, GP pouches, or backpack, and it can be distributed across your team if you don't want to carry all of them, because by no means am I saying you have to put all this in your gear. Um, you're already carrying some of this, so some of it's going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I already know what to do with this. Some of you might not have seen before, some of it's just little tips, tricks, stuff I found with it throughout my time in the Army, the time I spent in the field, in deployment, and the time my buddies did the same with it as well. So it's all stuff that just makes your life a little bit easier, allows you to fix gear, add to gear, and just in general, uh, when you're out there, and especially when it's a three, five, 10 day kind of thing, 30 day kind of thing, and you're in the field or camping, um, it's just stuff that makes your life a little bit easier and lets you do a little bit more when you're out there with nothing to kind of resupply you or give you those kind of aids. So everything serves multiple purposes, nothing's for a fixed purpose, but let's take a look at it, go over a few examples, talk about them, and show what kind of things you can carry to make your life and your buddy's lives a little easier in the field. All right, before I get too far into this, um, I do want to re reiterate again, I'm not saying by any means you have to carry all these things on you. This is just stuff that I and my buddies found that made our lives easier while we were in the Army and on the, in the field and on deployments, and we always end up, you know, after an extended amount of time, you always end up finding use for it and it always just makes things a little better at the end of the day. So, again, whether this is you carrying it within your... Uh, your kit or in your backpack or if you're in a vehicle inside there or it's distributed across your team and you're like hey this guy has this item it's there and you can use it to fix the gear you have or do you know field craft kind of things with it so the first items are stuff you're probably already carrying with you you have on your person or within your team somebody's carrying something like this and that's just 550 cord and tape whether it be duct tape or electrical tape um, these are pretty much the easiest ways to fix kit and gear from you know the get-go you can tie stuff down lash stuff down uh, take extra stuff put it on your gear you can add vegetation stuff like that duct tape or just you know secure si let's say you have something that's starting to wobble or you just need extra attention on it because you're about to go down a mountain or up a mountain falls are likely to happen you're about to go through a river and you want to tie stuff down extra 550 cord is going to be your friend there duct tape and electrical tape so duct tape is a good way to fix clothing fix holes in gear obviously don't carry orange um re-waterproof stuff if there's a hole or rip in there so in general a small roll of duct tape that's either taped around like a water bottle you got taped around the bottom or something like that that's the old usual trick or just tucked in your bag somewhere um you're gonna enjoy having that on you at the end of the day and electrical tape it doesn't really do as well for clothing or re-waterproofing but you can fix quite a bit you can add some retention and you can use it as a quick band-aid if you cut yourself and you want to keep that covered just because you're out in the open and having exposed wounds um, just leads to infection especially if you don't have time to like really thoroughly clean it so those are the items you're probably already carrying on you so let's move from there to items you're probably already carrying on you some of them's just additional to the items you're carrying on you and some of them you might not have thought about but yeah let's go into those items all right so these next two items are similar to the ones we already covered but it's kind of just giving you more, or next three items, just giving you more options that you can choose from, might not have thought of, and do serve some good purposes. So first off, zip ties. This is just a more um, solid form of retention that can take the place of your 550 cord or your uh, tape. But zip ties, I never really carried these a whole lot of me. My buddies did. Um, but once you find a good use for zip ties, you're going to like having them on you. They weigh next to nothing. They take up almost no space. They can go in your backpack, sit at the bottom of it, whatever it may be. And it's just nice to have from fixing straps on like your backpack because you're buckle busted and you got to like tie something back on. This can help you do that. You can help you remount a pouch or really solidly, solidly secure a piece of SI to another piece of gear. So zip ties are nice. Again, it serves a similar purpose to your 550 cord and your tape, but it's another option to use. From there, rubber bands. So these I did carry on me quite a bit. I had one or two laying around usually. And these just serve a lot of purposes, just extra retention, similar to 550 cord and tape. Again, it's just another option to carry. These are really good for antennas, though. If you have a loose, wobbly long whip on your 152, 148, ASIP, 117, whatever other kind of radio you're carrying, and you got a long whip on there, the more they're used, the more they get floppy and wobbly. It's a good way to fold it down, get secured, especially if that one wrap has worn out, come off because the last guy took it off, whatever it may be. Um, rubber bands, they are good, and they're good for adding vegetation. So if on your helmet, on your gear, your backpack, your position, uh, rubber bands are a quick and easy way to get some vegetation weaved into your gear to help add to your concealment. So again, like everything I've already covered before, 
weighs next to nothing. You can shove it anywhere, and you're not even going to remember you have it until you need it. Um, as an alternative rubber bands is shock cord. You can cut off several links, have it laying around, but shock cord does similar things to rubber bands, but it's just a more durable, longer lasting, it can withstand to the environment a little better. So shock cord is an option. You can have some spare drum locks on there, stuff like that. It's an easy way to secure stuff. So from there, let's get into stuff again. You're probably already carrying on you. Some of it's spares, and some of it's just to explain kind of the purpose behind why you're carrying this item, rather than just putting it in your pocket and having it on you. So you're probably already carrying a multi-tool on you, and we're really looking for three uses out of this multi-tool. So that's the pliers, because you have to pull, pick at something, what are these splinters, tighten down gear, anything like that, cut through some wire, something like that, light wire, not thick wire. Um, your, the pliers on here are gonna do a lot of good. From there, two more items on here while we're really carrying the multi-tool. And that is, if I can get it out, your Phillips head screwdriver and your flathead screwdriver. So these are the three things on there that you really care about and why you're carrying a multi-tool because this is all gonna fix gear, tighten stuff down, and just make your life a little better in the field. Now, carrying you know, some other form of Phillips head and flathead and pliers, you know, this just keeps it all in one package that is fairly compact, can fit in a pistol magazine pouch, throw it in your pocket, throw it in the pouch, throw it in the, your backpack, something like that. But pliers are good to have on you, and it's just be able to good it's just good to be able to tighten screws down without having to like use the edge of your knife because you're just gonna snap your knife at the end of the day. So yeah. So pliers, uh flathead and Phillips head are while you're carrying a multi-tool. The knife on there, I always treat it as like a really big backup. Um, a, it keeps it sharp because it's the last backup I have for a knife and because it's just kind of awkward on there and you can't really get as quite a fine of a movement as you do with the other knives. Everything else on there, saw blades, if you're doing anything crazy field craft wise, you might get a use out of it, but your saw blade, everything else on there is kind of the, it's just nice to have. Um, you're probably not going to end up using it. So from there, a working knife. Now let's get into what a working knife means. Now when I say a working knife, I mean a like you're putting it to work. It's not your fancy pants kind of knife you've got that's you know really just there for combat. I don't even want to call it combat, but like I'm not talking about a bayonet or something really big. I'm talking about a working knife that you can use for small things. You're not gonna worry about if you lose. And that's the biggest thing there. You might lose it. So whether it be a small fixed blade like this that you can beat up to all ends and use to pry, poke, prod, cut or a little folder, whatever it may be. Uh, something like this, where all you're really doing with it is cutting, maybe a little bit of at light digging, um, prying, stuff like that. That's what this knife, the purpose it serves, and you're not gonna worry about if you lose it because it falls out of your pocket, you drop it, something like that. Your working knife is just literally to work with and may, you know cut what you need to cut and get through what you need to get through and do a little bit of light prying. Um, if you want to carry multiple knives on you, by all means, I usually have at least like two on me when I'm doing pretty much anything, um, even just out and about. Um, especially like when I'm wearing my kit, I have one in my pockets and on my belt line these days. So they're just good to have on you. And you know, the majority of the use is just working. It's cutting stuff, getting through stuff, and you know prying stuff open if I need to pry it open. Because that's all it's really for. Not prying doors open by any means, but like little things or popping things off something or whatever it be. From there, something that kind of takes the place of that working knife is shears, because you can cut with these fairly well. They are shears, trauma shears, and they do a pretty good job because they cut through most anything, and every now and then you just need to replace them because the blade kind of wears out. But they can cut through thin metal, they can cut through 550 cord, clothes, um, pretty much nylon, anything that you're really gonna encounter. This you know can take the place of your knife, but it's also good to just have these on you because they do serve some emergency medical purposes, but it's also just nice to have a pair of shears on you because they're good to cut with, easy to cut with, and they're safer if you're in like the dark or something like that than pulling this out. Pulling this out is a little safer than this. Um, it just makes your life a little bit easier having these on you. But you probably already have shears on you in your first aid kit. I'm not saying to pull those out. You know, an additional pair of shears that from the, what's in your first aid kit, your IFAC, or in your backpack for that purpose. This is just a cutting tool. It's a little safer than your knife and you'll still find plenty of uses for because it can cut through quite a bit. Let's go on from there. From there, a spare flashlight and extra batteries in addition to whatever else you're already carrying. So spare flashlight, just in case you drop your headlamp, 
drop whatever else is on you that you're using for a you know, light source that's red light capable, hopefully, um, or you know, just in general, then extra batteries because if you're out there for a long term time, um, if you're burning through knobs because you're doing nighttime stuff, if you're burning through your GPS or your PEC or you know, your laser device, something like that, having the batteries to really support you throughout that time is easy, kind of, depending on what you're doing, but um, having a couple backup to the backups you already have you're not going to regret it in the day because once you need it once your buddy needs it especially because they forgot to bring you know two or three extra batteries they needed for the five ten day kind of thing you're doing um having them on you is going to be a good thing in the day because you can continue mission and get what you need done done so i just when i was in i always carried way more batteries than i needed and i never regretted it because at the end of the day especially nowadays um lithium batteries are a big thing those things weigh nothing you can throw them in your backpack and you can distribute across your kit everything like that and it's just easy to carry nothing too complicated to carry from there um this one you know you're probably already carrying a couple on you but a spare tourniquet somewhere in your backpack just carrying an additional one obviously tourniquets aren't the answer for everything um obviously get training to how to use a first aid kit or use your tourniquet and when to use a tourniquet and when to not use a tourniquet but having a spare on you in addition to the one or two on your kit belt line in your ifac um, whether it be for you and you can tell your buddies, Hey, I have another one here or it's for your buddy because you know, God forbid something extra happened and he needs more than what you have available at the time. Um, having another one on you is an easy thing to carry. And again, it can just go kind of anywhere on your kit, but yeah, so let's go from there into the other items. Something you probably already have on you is a notepad. Um, always having a backup is nice because a, if you're out there doing a lot of observation, you're gonna fill something like this up pretty quickly, especially doing patterns of life, um, or if it's you know a busy area, writing down what you see, it's gonna fill something like this up pretty fast. So having a spare one on you is nice. Just tucked away in your backpack, something like that. Extra pins. Um, a nice little trick that you've probably already seen before, just putting glow tape, so glow in the dark tape on the back of your notepad. Right in the rain ones are you know the best because they're waterproof, you can write them in the rain. Um, if they get wet, they're not gonna like bleed too heavily. But adding that little glow tip on the back gives you a little bit of ability to write in the nighttime. Obviously you gotta charge it up to an extent, especially if it's been sitting in your backpack. But it's on there, it's nice, it's a little thing that you, once you need it, it's nice to have on there. And yeah. Pins, you know, obviously having pins that can write on the surfaces you're working on. And carrying a Sharpie with you, whether it be a mini Sharpie or a full size Sharpie, only because this can write anywhere. Um, you pull that Sharpie out and you can write anywhere you need to lose your notepad, need to write it somewhere else, you need to write just anything and everything, a Sharpie's good to have on you, pull it out, you can write on anything, and you're good to go at the end of the day. So, yep. From there, um, this is something that, you know, not everybody needs by any means, is extra marking material. So an extra spare V17 panel, especially for emergency purposes, like, and you're really getting down to it, and you're like, man, I really need to mark my position very well. An extra one is nice to have. Extra chem lights, same kind of thing. If you're using chem lights, um, this is obviously something that your team, your platoon, your unit, it's going to be SOP for. So maybe you're carrying only one color and that one color is like an emergency color. So maybe red, for example, or white is like your really just emergency color. Like if I, if you see this popped, it means something's really wrong. So stuff like that, I mean, there is nice, but not something everybody needs. We got our last bit of things is this one is, I mean, Probably one of my favorites to carry on me. I carried on me, um, especially my second deployment, quite a bit because we were in the heat and we were walking around a lot, was just uh, drink mixes. So any kind of drink mix, something sweet, something strong flavored, and something that you know you can put in your canteen or water bottle and you're gonna drink it uh, when you take a long haul kind of thing like that. But these are a really, 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 really quick pick-me-up, especially when walking around for a long amount of time. Throwing a drink mix in your canteen or water bottle, it's, it's kind of like brushing your teeth after a couple of days of not being able to because you're out in the field. Same kind of thing. It's just going to help you out and get you feeling a little better. Pocket snacks. Now, same kind of purpose. Um, something that's easy to eat on the go. You can walk and eat or you can, when you take a short halt, it only takes you that minute or two of when you have time to be able to shove down your throat is just a little pocket snack. Um, yeah, same kind of thing. It's just a quick pick me up. And if you're doing a long movement, let's say you're moving multiple K um, through, you know, the tree line, something like that over long distance, up and down hills or mountains, 
you know, if you have a set distance, like every mile, every two or three miles, I'm going to take a good bite of the snack. It's just a good way to reward yourself for making it that far. And just a quick pick me up because you're like, oh man, you know, this good, strong flavor, whether it be chocolate, candy, something like that. Um, it's, just, it's sugary, it's sweet. It's got a strong flavor, hopefully. It's just a nice way to kind of reward yourself for doing whatever you're doing and get you going a little bit further. From there, something I'll go into further in a video in the future is kind of an extension of your duct tape and your 550 cord and everything else went over in the beginning. It's just like gear repair items that are more permanent. So we're gonna get into that in a future video, but having the ability to actually more permanently repair your gear if you're out there for a long duration is something that you want to consider having on you and it just makes your life a little better because you're not walking around with a duct tape crotch a duct tape butt you're not walking around with a you know uh, wet weather top that has a big old rip in it something like that that every time you get wet or you pack it back away the duct tape kind of falls off so again something we'll go into a future video how to repair that kind of stuff better in the field but yeah one more thing that's easy to add to your kit at your pockets or your bag is just a sweat rag or rag in general now these serve a lot of purposes from wiping the sweat off your face if you're in a pretty hot environment and it doesn't even necessarily be hot just you're exerting yourself quite a bit um you're gonna sweat and you're gonna sweat a lot so having something that can make a bandana on your head to catch that sweat wipe it off your face if you're getting real dirty it's always nice to be able to kind of clean yourself up a little bit so having a rag or a bandana on you is something that's nice to do um i wore a bandana quite a bit one of my deployments and during some lot of field trips or field exercises just because i sweat a lot so it's nice to have that on me to wrap around my head and just be able to wipe off sweat catch it and everything like that um shop rags are cheap light easy to use i don't recommend using these for optics because that's another reason we're carrying a rag is carrying a soft rag to be able to carry and clean something like your binos your lenses if it's real dusty something like that i'm going to wipe them off something that's made more for optics like um these little chamois type things you can put in your kit have in your pocket those are nice because you can wipe that lens off it's not like a scratched up to all you know high heaven something like that it's just a nice way to clean that gear off wipe it down wipe down the exterior of your weapon if it's getting real dirty and real muddy you know these are nice to have and you just it's kind of cleaning yourself up when you have the time to do it and you're not gonna be mad you have it on you um it can serve a lot of purposes so yep okay uh spare carabiner they're nice to have because it just adds to it's a way to secure gear to you especially if it has a loop to do it with um putting this somewhere and just especially if you're in a vehicle having one of these laying around lets you you know secure your backpack in the vehicle something like that so it's not flopping around um it's a spare carabiner you can hook it anywhere it's nice to have whether it be a full-size one or a mini one or just a grimlock kind of deal these are nice to have spare baggies or an ssc type bag so an ssc type bag is just something sensitive site exploration stuff like that so you got to grab and go um this is nice just if you drop stuff you got to get up in a hurry or your buddy you know you got to pick up some of his gear out to your bag um it's a good way to organize that gear and get into you and be able to pull it out quickly and know what's in there so it's something like this um you know packs down to nothing and then from there spare baggies so your mre hot beverage bags um, are actually a pretty good one to grab out of your MREs and keep on you because it's an easy way to waterproof stuff. So if you have a notepad that's not waterproof or you have to carry something that's not waterproofed or you pick up something from your buddy, where it may be, or your phone, this is an easy way to waterproof that item for a short term amount of time and really just keep it secure wherever it is stored. So I always carried one of these and I had just some extra stuff in it that I didn't use a lot because it's, you know getting to a ziplock like this can take an extra minute or two. Um, not extra minute, but you know, it takes extra time. But it is stuff I wanted to keep waterproofed on me at all times and just in a small package. So extra ziplocks, waterproofing material is nice to have on you. This just it doesn't take up any space. You just throw this in your backpack. You know, it's just nice to have on you at the end of the day, especially if it starts raining. You weren't expecting rain, so you didn't waterproof all your stuff as you needed to. Rain comes with it. It just comes and you don't know when it's going to come sometimes and when you get caught in it um it can suck quite a bit so being able to waterproof something even if it's just your cigarettes or your dip can <laughs> um you don't want those to get a waterlogged now you got a zip lock on you if you're one of those guys that does that kind of stuff all right so i hope you enjoyed this video um again you don't have to carry all this on you it's just stuff that you can carry on you 
and you can distribute it across your team. Um, everything I've shown, I've used, and I've used to some extent or another, and my buddies have used it to some extent or another, and it's stuff we all, through our conversations, recommend each other's kind of carrying. So, you know, take a look at it, see what you have, what you might need, what you can add to your kit. Um, none of it's super heavy. You know, the heaviest thing here is probably the multi-tool, and that's not even that heavy. Everything here doesn't take up a lot of space. You can find a good pocket for it somewhere, keep it in your backpack, and it just makes your life a little bit easier, whether you're camping, out in the field, if you're in the military, or you're just looking to fill out your packing list for a reason, um, for a go bag for an extended amount of time. You know, this is stuff you can put in there because gear does break. Um, you know, whether it's issued gear that you have a bad opinion of, or it's your really nice, special Gucci gear, after a certain amount of time, it does start to bust, holes up here, the molly breaks, um, you know, button snaps aren't that popular anymore. But button snaps break, um, your gear rips, your clothing rips. It doesn't matter how much you paid for your piece of clothing. If you rip it, you rip it. And it's going to rip, especially if you're going through barbed wire, anything like that. So, which is, you know, some just vegetation. You know, you get hit a creosote bush, something like that. Um, creosote bush, you hit something thorny, you're going up and down mountains, scree, rocks. It tears your clothes up. So, and, and again, it doesn't matter what brand you're buying or clothing. That stuff just going to rip it up. Um... So again, all stuff, easy to carry, easy to put around. Um, if you have additions to this, you know, feel free to leave that in the comments below. If you, um, you know, don't like any of this, you know, feel free to explain something like that, argue about it, I don't care. Um, it's just all stuff that's just nice to have on you. So thanks for watching, appreciate you watching. Um, we carry a handful of these items on the website. Not everything here is carried, but um, we do carry some of it. But if you need gear, you need to replace some gear and get some new gear, Make sure to check out the website, sign up for emails, because that's where you get all the you know, new items, restock, featured items, sales, everything in between there, where we feature it within our emails. And then our Instagram, I like to show off a lot of this stuff on a daily basis, how to use it. You can get eyes on the gear you want, you know a little more about it before you buy it, and just see kind of, you know, that's kind of stuff we sell on a daily basis. So thanks for watching, do appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment if you got a comment, and um, look forward to the next video with you.